Hey folks, Dave the Not So Evil Evil Viking 13 here, and welcome back to the Confederate States of America in this series that I call the Confederate Republic. The year is still 1861, but Confederate forces have made ridiculous advances across the entire continent. At this point, the Union is surrounded and split in half. We own territory from Louisiana all the way up to Chicago, Illinois. Let's see what's up in our current month, uh, December of 1861. The Medal of Honor is introduced as the highest military decoration awarded by the U.S. government. And in Kentucky, skirmishing continues throughout the month as the state's neutrality is ignored. Not very relevant for us because I have owned Kentucky for... I think since episode 2, uh, it fell first, I think. It's pretty solidly Confederate territory at this point, and Kentucky's Confederate armies are now in Virginia, preparing for the advance east. But on the last video, you guys got to vote. Which theater do we focus on, west or east? And the general consensus was west take out their western territories, and then strangle Washington, D.C. That's a pretty solid plan, so we're going to focus on that. Ready and awaiting First order. up, General Longstreet, come on east. Make ready. At the ready. Make ready. Ready and awaiting order. There we go. There's your army right there, just waiting. I'll get a new ordnance board going in Richmond. I had 12,000 gold this turn. Not bad. Actually, let me invest some of that in some industry. I'll go for the iron workshops down here in West Texas. That leaves us with 5,000 for our turn. Men, sir, forward immediately at the ready. Okay. Out west here, I think I'm going to focus on, honestly guys, just the nearest territory, right to Iowa and Minnesota. For war. They have a tiny garrison here. I just hope that the Nebraska territory is not totally built up. I feel like it's probably not because they are so low on funds. I'll also build one farm down here in Florida. Construction complete for the states and gunnery school in Richmond. Oh, what can I build from that now? Ooh, a 12 pounder Napoleon artillery. Yeah, I'll get one of those going for sure. And some recruitment out in Missouri. There's that army. That's kind of our central army out here. Um, St. Louis is pretty secure, so... Yeah, General Mosby here. I might send him north. And then east to Detroit. Get ready for battle. Looks like three turns of traveling. And then you guys recruit, let's say, some engineers and some Hamptons Legion cavalry and some farms. Anything else to build for this turn? Yes, sir. Your humble sir. I think those cannons are going to finish off that army. Uh, let's see, three slots left. Sir. Yep, three cannons coming. General Jeb Stewart, where can I put him? I guess he could use his own army, but gotta wait for that military governor's encampment to finish building. Sir. 
orders. DC looks pretty quiet, so I'm gonna march back to Forward. Richmond march. with General Robert E. Lee. His army is actually well supplied, unlike actual history, and the lions in Virginia are stable for now. I think that's all that I have going on. I'm gonna end this turn here and see what happens next. December of 1861. Part 2, I guess. The Atlantic coast. The Federal Navy tightens its grip on the ocean as Confederate blockade runners are captured off of Cape Fear and Cape Hatteras. And for both sides, uh, armies dig in for a long, lonely winter away from home for Christmas. Lots of buildings constructed. And a few troops recruited. We ready actually get one of those Napoleon cannons with Make General ready. Lee. Mark. March. March. Yes. March. Yes, sir. Okay. Out west, let's give Jeb Stewart some cavalry. Oh, we actually can't recruit anymore. That's a bit ironic because if I remember correctly, Jeb Stewart did love his cavalry. I'll do some volunteer infantry and some regular infantry. Gotta keep the upgrades going as well. Do a steam pump gold mine and maybe repair that farm. Only cost us 30. Economically, what else do I have going on? Uh, yeah, I'll build an Iron Master's Works right there. Yes. Troops, halt! Sir. Cannons race to catch up. Servant. With actually, let's put um, put General Beauregard yes, in sir. Kansas Territory Anything and Jeb more? Stewart. Ready Need our raiding for. parties. Mark. I think that second army out west could really use some cannons of its own, so I'll give them I'll give them a 12 pounder Napoleon, and then more to come once I can afford it. And some Confederate militia. Yes. General Mosby, head for Detroit. Found the call to battle. Yeah, the Union actually can't even afford to repair its own buildings. That's really rough for them. Confederate engineers, you guys come up to Chicago. And I'll send some volunteer line infantry back down to replace you. I'm putting a lot of focus on my front lines, but I think that's the best solution because all of the Union's armies are basically stacked along the fronts here. Unless the Nebraska Territory is just full of Union soldiers, I really can't see it yet. I doubt it though. Like I said, they're strapped for cash. At last, 1862 in January. January 27th, President Lincoln issues a war order authorizing the Union to launch a unified aggressive action against the Confederacy. General McClellan, in charge of Union forces, ignores the order. Looks like Lincoln then places him in command of the Union Army of the Potomac, and he is directly ordered to attack the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia. Pretty wild to think about armies from DC marching to Richmond, Virginia. Truly brothers versus brothers. Sir. 
really just a, uh, a really sad war overall. For the second army of Northern Virginia, I'm going to swap out this Confederate militia. More orders? Send that militia back Forward. to Richmond. March. Just a garrison for now. Sir. General Longstreet. Kind of probe north. Let's land. see what's going on March. up there. I think I'll do a bit of infrastructure construction as well. A few of these territories don't even have uh, the level 2 of railroads and roadways. Yeah, or level 1 for Louisiana. Hopefully that will help our movement speed, which is abysmal right now. Yes, sir. Anything more? At the ready. Forward! Sir. March! Your orders? Okay. Sir. Make ready! Sir. March! Sir. Your orders? Still can't recruit any cavalry out west. I wish I had saved some for out west. Ready for That's order. where they're actually really needed. Forward, sir. For crown and Got those huge expanses of Forward, terrain out there. March. Tell you what, I'm going to send Hampton's Legion out west. Yes. Foraging supplies, sir. Cannons, come on and, and catch up. Forward. I think I'll actually wait for the cannons to catch up with yes. uh, General Stewart before the push to Minnesota. I'm just going to roll through a couple turns here, guys, and get prepared for those assaults. Very slow movement speeds for all of our units right now. That brings us to January of 1862, Part B. Lincoln's personal spy, William Alvin Lloyd, a steamboat and railroad guide. Uh, publisher, he was employed as a personal spy during the Civil War for President Lincoln. Uh, looks like him and his associates first entered the Confederacy in July of 1861. Looks like he remained there throughout the war, researching his publications and providing intelligence directly to President Lincoln. Spending time in Virginia, Georgia, Tennessee, and Louisiana. New town emerges in Florida. Is that a port? No, that is just a town. You guys could actually use a coaching inn to help with uh, just general population happiness. I guess we can lower taxes a bit now too. That'll bring us down on income just a tiny amount, but not bad. I will construct a couple of buildings here to help just maintain order and then keep that troop recruitment coming out here in the west as well. Cannons go on to the north. You guys march this way. You guys march that way. Let's give you guys some line infantry out west. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm seeing a lot of troop concentrations around DC and Pennsylvania. So it looks like that's where the Union is hedging their bets, is just being able to hold yeah. on to what they have and aha, economic upgrades, industrial iron mining complex. I guess they're just hoping to hold the line, build up some money, and then fight back, but I think we're over the hill, guys. It's just too late for the Union at this point. General McDowell and his dragoons, along with a 3-inch ordnance rifle, are heading west towards Chicago. That's where General Stonewall Jackson himself is waiting with an entire army occupying Chicago. Ready and awaiting order. 
three inch ordnance rifle. What is that? I actually can't see the details. Anyway, at the ready, General Mosby. Let's take Detroit, Michigan. Prepare for war. Demand the surrender of the militia. Siege broken. And the militia has accepted the surrender. Let's repair that capital. And that bumps our income up another thousand. Awesome. I really wonder if that might be a good territory to trade to the British in exchange for an alliance. Uh, yeah, Chicago earns more income. Michigan's a bit more isolated. I'd be okay with that. Great Britain, what do you think? Or are we in an alliance already? Oh, that's right, last episode, I just bought an alliance from Great Britain, so perfect. Don't mind me, guys, just packing out awkwardly here. I get to maintain ownership of all of the former Union states for my republic. That's perfect. France is allied with the states, uh, the Union. Let's request a trade agreement. They want me to give the Kansas Territory, but then pay me 11,000 gold. Let's request trade, and I'll give you guys 10 turns of military access instead. How about that? Okay, I'm not given a territory for trade. We're going to end right there, but then Mosby's Raiders are going right for General McDowell next turn. Make sure that everybody Make is ready. at the maximum range that they can be at. And as soon as that cannon gets north, ready in quite a few one. turns, we're going to march on the Nebraska Territory. February of 1862. The Bounty Law. The Confederacy knew it was in trouble from the beginning of the war because it didn't have a navy. All of the ships of the US Navy uh, naturally belonged to the Union and the few privately owned ships that could be converted to military service were no match for the Union Navy. Therefore, privateering became essential. And it looks like on May 21st, 1861, the Confederate Congress enacted an amendment to their May 6th, 1861 Declaration of War that provided for that privateering. It looks like the Union has marched some armies just within range to protect that uh, industrial iron mining complex, the and I can't quite get to it now. Battalions ready! Oh, actually, just the movement alone means I can't quite get to it. General Hancock and General Bradley do have two almost full stacks here in Maryland. I think it's time to keep our presidential palace upgrading. And some recruitment as well. Oh my, actually cancel that palace. We have some recruiting to do. Greg's Brigade. Let's get all three of you. Confederate Stonewall Brigade. That's going to clear out all of our money, but that's going to give us some great recruitment, some great line infantry for these Your army. humble servant. Unit recruited. We out here in the Kansas Territory. Ready for order. It 
looks like we've got two units of line infantry. No, line infantry and cavalry going for the farms again. Ready and awaiting order. My dragoons won't be able to stop them on their own. Make ready. March. That will have to fall to my other army out west. I guess you guys should just go ahead and march out and go after that farmland because they're Onward. marching right for it. Yes, sir. Onward. Cannons head north and then Ready for orders. You know what? Jeb Stewart, they have left Iowa and Minnesota undefended. March onward. Here we go, guys. General McDowell has fallen back to Lancaster, Ohio, where once again the Union is desperately trying to build up their industrial uh, buildings here to get more income. I'm not going to let that happen. Let's keep the punishment coming. General Mosby, take your dragoons and your infantry and swarm Ohio. Prepare the troops for battle! You know what? No demanding of surrender. Let's fight this one out. Make sure that we push this army back entirely and make sure that Ohio belongs to the Confederacy. We are, of course, in the dead of winter still. I don't have any cannons with me, so let's just get my line infantry set up. I'm going to mark you guys out in two groups, one and two. One on the right, two on the left. Then General Mosby, back here. And I'm going to leave my cavalry ungrouped, but I want two groups on each side. Or two units on each side. No groups. For the flank. Hmm, we're actually on the edge of the map here, and the Union is down in the center. With a lot of those cannons. Those ordnance rifles. Okay, well, infantry, let's get in here quickly. You're going to be nice and tired by the time you get down here, though. Cavalry, let's get back here and try and hit those cannons. General McDowell, you are kind of out there by yourself here. Let's see if we can take advantage of that. Mosby's Raiders taking some fire here, but let's go in and attack the good General McDowell. And he is enveloped. I might actually be able to overwhelm them with just my cavalry here. And the general is dead. All Confederate cavalry back off, back off. Let the infantry move in and do the work. That's almost insignificant losses for all of the cavalry here, guys. That is awesome. Yeah, the state militia is already in rough shape. And they've lost their artillery. Abandoned behind on the field. Ooh, that was loud. We're 
closing to some serious killing range right here. My troops are winded, but man, the Union has taken a punch right to the jaw here. They don't even have time to get organized. No chances for a defense. I think it's time for the cavalry charge. Let's just end this. All infantry, hold your fire. I am going to run down a few of these survivors just to make sure that Ohio is secure. With that heroic victory, the entire Union Army is wiped out, and we only lost 74 men. Top kills Texas Rangers with 185, followed by Mosby's Raiders. Perfect. There it is, 74 lost, and zero Union forces left. Sound the call to battle! Well, I don't have the money to repair Ohio just yet. Another blow to the Union, though. Got more infantry here in Kansas. Oh, no, they're already in the correct group. New town. Oh, yeah, St. Joseph. Yeah, I'll have to build something that improves the population's happiness because they are pretty pissed off right now. I don't want to leave you guys with just an overwhelming fight though, so I'm going to be really aggressive here and see if I can provoke a Union response around DC. Let's get a real battle going here and see what the Union has left. Yep, workers on strike back here in Michigan. I'll give you guys a coaching in. New port emerges. Let's give you guys a trading port. February of 1862. The Confederacy's first Secret Service agent, James D. Bullock. Almost immediately after the attack on Fort Sumter, Bullock travels to Liverpool, England, and establishes a base of operations there. Britain is officially neutral in the conflict, but private and public sentiment favors the Confederacy. And of course, they wanted to buy all the cotton they could, whatever got through that blockade. Alright, Louisiana Line Infantry, let's get some of you guys built. Another Hamptons Legion to go up and join our new army. And some engineers as well. Yes, sir. Your orders? Ready for orders. I don't like you guys Humble, out sir. here raiding by yourself. March. I'm gonna have the dragoons head you off at the pass just to make sure that you don't get south. That could be disastrous. Upgrade the farm for 700. Yes, sir. General Stewart, march on Iowa and Minnesota. And over here in Virginia, let's upgrade to a large tobacco plantation.
And I'll recruit some militia to help keep the order over here in Michigan. 288 for the replenishment there. And for now, Ohio will continue to burn. General Stonewall Jackson. Is Chicago pacified yet? Anything more? They are, Arch. thanks to our lower tax rate, I bet. General Jackson, go ahead and come on east. Forward! For crown and country. I'll use them to occupy territories that I capture. And I'll use Mosby's Raiders to hit and run as we head east towards West New York. Guys, the noose is tightening here for the Union. Your humble servant. Can I provoke them into a fight, though? Lots of Confederate militia. General Longstreet. Ah, easy prey. Let's try and make an attack here. Although, look at that, guys. DC orders. has been abandoned. Robert E. Lee, go for it. Prepare for war. Okay. Looks like... We have no armies within reinforcing range, and every single one of their armies is within reinforcing range. This might be it, guys. This might be the battle that we've been waiting for. Hmm. That's almost three full stack armies, though. I think that's a little too far as far as the uh, scales go. I want to be aggressive, but not quite that aggressive. Let's see if I can just split those forces in half, and then I'll definitely take on that challenge. So for now, Lee, break your siege, fall back from DC. Oh. Okay, March of 1862, the Monitor and the Merrimack. In an attempt to remove the North's great naval advantage, Confederate engineers convert a scuttled Union frigate, the USS Merrimack, into an iron-sided vessel, which they renamed the USS Virginia, or sorry, the CSS Virginia. March 9th is the first engagement between ironclad ships and it takes place off of Norfolk, Virginia. The USS Monitor fights the CSS Virginia to a draw, but not before the Virginia sinks two wooden-hulled US warships. So a draw, but uh, the Union does lose more ships. Workers riot in Michigan. I'm gonna upgrade to a state house to try and control that population. Sir. Come on, Jackson, get to Detroit. I'll upgrade to a state capital there in uh, Illinois as well. Build an Iron Master's Works. Path blocked. Hmm. Yes. Can I scoot back south? You know what? Let's go north. General Longstreet here is going to just dive deep into Pennsylvania and see what happens. I have lots of militia, but they're pretty experienced. Oh boy, and we have a ton of recruitment Ready now. For order. Time to swap out all of this volunteer infantry. Forward! March! Tons of unique Troops. units for Lee's army. Forward. That is awesome. Sir. In position. Infantry, march north. And let's see what we can stir up. Ready for orders. Looks like those Union forces are going to head for Kansas Territory. I'm going to definitely auto-resolve this one. None shall defeat us. And the Raiders are pushed back. 289 for the replenishment. Yes, sir. Cavalry catch up. 
At the ready. General Stewart. Hey, for battle. Onward to Iowa. Let's keep pushing aggressively out here in the east. Ooh, a rebellion in Michigan. It looks like the militia has risen up to challenge our rule. Wait, it's just generals. General Sherman, General Meade, and General Grant with some Union volunteer militia. Yes. General Jackson, go put down that rebellion. By the left, march! And upgrade to a body house as well. We are now in March of 1862. Major Sullivan Bilal, the second Rhode Island Volunteer Regiment, has become famous in the Civil War for his letter that he wrote to his wife Sarah a few days before he was mortally wounded in battle. What happened to his body after he died, however, is seldom mentioned. In early March of 1862, Word reached Washington that the Confederates were abandoning their lines around Manassas, Virginia. Union troops soon occupied the area, permitting Rhode Island Governor William Sprague and a band of about 70 others to embark upon a mission to recover the bodies of some Rhode Island officers, including that of Bilal, for burial in their home state. A young black girl made her way from a nearby cabin and recited a chilling tale claiming that a number of men from the 21st Georgia Regiment had robbed the graves several weeks earlier. This was after they found the grave sites empty. They had dug up the body, severed his head from his body, and burned the mutilated corpse in an attempt to remove the flesh and procure the bones and skull as trophies. That is just brutality. The group found a human femur, vertebrae, and portions of a pelvic bone among the ashes of an old fire, and nearby they found a soiled blanket with tufts of human hair. A local farmer confirms the girl's story, contending that no Virginian would have done such a thing, and that those responsible were from a Georgia regiment. His remains were taken back, though, uh, to Rhode Island and buried. A lock of his hair removed from the soil blanket is presented to his wife. That's pretty grim. Your humble servant. It looks like the Union has blocked off my infantry from reaching the forces to the north. Hmm. Newtown in Louisiana. You guys are pretty happy, so let's go with a craft workshop. Newtown in Upper Texas. Let's go with. Eh, we'll do a coaching in for you guys, too. Lots of farmland complete. We only have 5,000 gold, though. I think it's time for some more upgrades. I'll do a industrial mining complex. Ready, that leaves us with 1,400 At the ready. Dragoons. Let's go after yes, the sir. remains of this Union raiding party. Them. Undaunted. And victory. Sir. Replenish Orders. and Make ready. you guys can't quite replenish again yet, but you know what? Go on northwards. Battle. Sir. General Stewart. For battle. Let's capture Iowa and Minnesota. Demand surrender. The siege is surrender broken. accepted. The back of the Union is definitely broken here, guys. They are gasping for air. Out here in the east, though. At the ready. Trying to get these troops northward. Onward! And it looks like my volunteer regiments have been intercepted by one of the largest Union armies. I'm going to have to retreat back Side to Virginia. The They're 
are not quite taking the bait. General Lee, can you reach Washington? Uh, they're going to be able to reinforce before next turn. Let's see what happens, though. Yep. It looks like Union forces have attacked General Lee's army. Only the forces occupying DC, though, and only 900 men reinforce them. Well, if the forces of DC's defense do want to fight, General Lee will give them a fight. Here we go, guys. Let's do it. The snow is already falling over Washington as General Lee's Army of Northern Virginia approaches. Actually, guys, it looks like we've taken either the outskirts or something. Yeah, this is not DC proper, but we've taken some kind of outline area. Um, unfortunately, though, it looks like... Yeah, we're on the downhill slope. The town is kind of in a valley here. So what that means is... I'm going to have to push up. I'm going to put my cannons here in the center and then just set up a lot of infantry to shift around to protect them. I don't like having to move into position, but I really have no choice. Okay. General Lee, you're going to be back here at your command post at the town hall. Stonewall Brigade, you guys take up the left flank here and charge up the hill. That should secure things so that our sharpshooters can get into position. And then everyone else can come up to join them. Yep, Irish Brigade and some more line infantry. Cavalry. Vidyet Cavalry. I want you guys on the left here. I will put you all in group one just for quick selection. Even if I don't move them as a group. There we go. And Dragoons. You guys will go on the far right. We'll move you up quickly as well. Okay. Let's pause things here. Artillery. March up to this line. Artillery. March up to here. Yeah, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Line infantry here. Cavalry up here. Infantry charge up. Infantry charge up. Everyone rush to get into your positions. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And the first cannon shots are out from the Union side. Here come those reinforcements for the Union on the left. Um, hmm. Really don't want to engage them just yet. Cavalry, just stay back. I want to end this fight quickly so I can turn my lines. Yep, 
Yep, my Vidyet cavalry is going to have to watch out in case theirs decides to make a charge. What are you guys doing? Pack those cannons back there. Cavalry, get ready to charge. Where's the other unit of cavalry? Some great canister shot from the Napoleon cannon right there in the center. We've got Union cavalry attacking our lines here on the left, though. They're making a slow push, it looks like. Nope, nope, fast push from the reinforcements. Come on, guys, let's get going. You guys are kind of out there by yourself. Come on back, come on back. You guys come up to assist. As I expected, you guys, your dumb pathfinding got stuck in your own artillery's path. Go figure. Okay, we have a massive cavalry fight on the left now. No time for square formation. Stonewall Brigade holding strong. And cavalry reinforcements on the right. Time to make that engagement. I think it's almost time to turn this cannon as well. No, we're gonna leave you guys there. Um, all units turn and let's face the enemy as they approach. Confederate Irish Brigade, get up the hill. Come on, guys. I want you guys here. You guys here. It's a very awkward terrain. It's hard to even select it. A massive, massive fight here on the left. Sharpshooters, I want you guys off here on the left. Try and pick off some of that cavalry and some of the incoming infantry. I want you to just go ahead and deploy where you are. Seriously. What on earth? There we go. Union cavalry broken. Let's get back here and hit this Union militia. Sharpshooters almost in position. Infantry fall back. Dragoons. I know. What is this? Good yet cavalry. Go ahead and fall back here. Let's form a corner in our lines. Come on, Pathfinding, let's go. Irish Brigade, form up back here. Got a solid cavalry wave back here. And their lines are broken. Cannon or howitzer number one, go ahead and pack up. Oh, 
Oh, hello. Union regular infantry hiding back here at the bottom of the hill. An excellent ambush, but not enough to save them, I don't think. Not from that wave. Ooh. Some Union artillery firing over my lines. They're going to be an issue. This is the final push, gentlemen. Pack up that Napoleon cannon. Looks like the Irish Brigade there is falling back. Who do I have selected here? This is Stonewall Brigade. You guys come up, take the church where, wow, lots of Union soldiers have died out front because of my cannons. Line infantry, go ahead and take this wall just in case. Cavalry, I know you're tired. Take that cannon from behind. Howitzer, push up to the church. Howitzer, pack up. You guys from the right, slow march on up to the church as well. I'm going to pull my sharpshooters just a bit further back into the tree line right here. And I'm going to bring General Lee up to the church to lead his men in victory. Napoleonic cannons. I want you guys front and center. Greg's Brigade, march up, take the left. Let's thicken those lines up. Okay, we've taken the church officially. All forces push, push, push. Cavalry, let's go for a break of the Union Colored Infantry. It's a beautiful snowfall right there. I think I'm going to actually leave that line infantry right there, just to make sure that our flanks are secure. Cavalry, start the march. Start the charge. And here comes General Lee arriving at the church. They have actually broken my cavalry. Very interesting. Looks like my line infantry and sharpshooters are really hitting them hard though. Cavalry, ignore the volunteer infantry. Let's go for this line infantry on the left. They have uh, more to lose, and they're closer. Order. And there we have it guys, they have been intercepted, 
the battle for Washington, D.C. has been won by the Confederacy. Now, we haven't taken the city yet. Uh, they marched out to meet us, but we have totally and completely broken the back of their defending armies and their militia. They still have plenty of troops to race back and reinforce it, but uh, a really crushing blow for the Union. We deployed 3,200 troops to meet their 3,200. The Union lost 2,500, we lost 900. No complete losses for our troops, just a pretty even spread. It looks like the cavalry did get hit hard, being right out front. Top kills, a Confederate cavalry, 392. Confederate 12-pounder Napoleon, that canister shot at the church was devastating. Stonewall Brigade, 198. Greg's Brigade, 191. And there goes a bunch of their armies splitting off there. For this turn, guys, we have 10,000 gold. But we have a rebel army in Michigan. We've got Lee's army that has to retreat rather than actually take Washington, D.C. because there's still so many troops defending it. And we have to replenish. Let's fall back. Replenish for 6,000. Yep, we're basically done for this turn. Yes. Additionally, General Longstreet's army is now completely on their own. They are so far north that we can't get these volunteer troops up to them. I'm going to pull the volunteer troops back to Forward. this village west heart. of Richmond. Make ready. Alright, General Longstreet, push towards central Prepare New York. For battle. And what's going on out west? Not much, still marching, uh, still repairing it looks like, yep, repairing, repairing, replenishment is good, ready for more replenishment here, 382, Make ready. cannons, come on ready. and try and catch up, ready for ooh, Minnesota is burning. Lots of Union forces moving around West New York, too. And of course, enemy raid in Michigan. Some construction. Workers on strike in Minnesota. That might rebel soon, actually. Half a lot. And for April of 1862, the Ranger Act has been passed. It's intended as a stimulus for the Confederate Army to recruit irregulars. That's going to end it for this episode for sure, guys. We've had some serious advances out west and a crazy fight here just outside of DC. I really think that the Union can't last more than a few more episodes. They really are uh, losing on all fronts. As long as we don't have to fight all of these armies in the east at once, we should be okay. For now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.